What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Remo, aka Mr. Rich Threads, back at you with another one. You already know what it is. Let's talk fashion, powered by the JBT Network. You know the spill. I don't even got to keep saying it because y'all doing a great job. Everybody's been liking, commenting. The numbers are going up, and the conversation and the comments been dope. I might not be touching on a few things. Let me know. Certain things you want to see? Let me know. Somebody I should feature? Let me know. Down in the comment section below. With that being said, let's start the show. What's going on? Like I said, welcome back to Let's Talk Fashion. It's your boy Remo, aka Mr. Rich Threads. Let's not take too long and jump right into this week's topic where we're going to be discussing a little bit of sponsorship, branding deals, money, likeness. All these go hand in hand because who I am as a person causes you to buy stuff in the stores. What I do in my profession causes you to go out and spend money. In most cases, you know, these big brands, they attach themselves to you know, whether it be artists, uh, athletes, you know, just influences in general in today's society, they reached out to an abundance because, you know, the brands like what they're seeing and they drive the numbers. The numbers drive the dollars for the company. But this in all years has always been something that we always should be paying attention to because some of our biggest influences come from our culture in itself. If you never really took notice to it, Jay-Z was Jay-Z, but Rockefeller was Rockefeller, but then they made Rockwear. The following was behind them, and they became one of the biggest streetwear designers in the industry at some point, just based off all their likeness. There was like little entities like State Property in there. You know, Sean John did have a run as well, where they became, you know, one of the biggest black designers in uh, Northern America, just off the strength that Puff was Puff. Puff's going through a lot right now. No diddy. But, you know, he's done what he's done in a in a in a span of time where his brand meant something in a whole because of what he's done, whether it be in the record label on TVs, in the industry in general, his influence really embarked on who he was gonna be and what numbers they was gonna put behind him. But in today's society, we got athletes like Caitlin Clark. She just got drafted, literally just got drafted to the WNBA and her brand endorsement deals is worth more than her WNBA contract. And that's because her following is just projected to be that much more and that much more meaningful off court than on court. So these brands are just pushing this young lady, pushing it. And it makes sense because, you know, she's going to need a bag and why not leverage who you are as a person to get the money that you need? It makes sense to me. A young man fought this weekend victorious, Ryan Garcia. See, he's a little different. He makes more money outside of the sport than actually inside of the sport, but his behavior outside of the sport would make you wonder, why do these brands continue to focus and, and endorse this guy? Is it an understanding that he has with these brands, knowing like, you know, I'm going to troll, but I'm going to have all the attention and all the numbers and statistics in your favor, so give me a break and I'll take care of you on the back end? Pause. That was crazy on the back end. But you know what I meant. Um, Ryan does it a very untraditional way. Controversial, you might say. But it works in his favor somehow, some way. And it makes sense, you know, because most boxers are not branded athletes in the outside of the sport. You know, you had a Manny Pacquiao once upon a time. They didn't believe in his... uh political views and they decided to get rid of him and he was one of the only few people that had a signature nike shoe at the time so he from that bag but you know at one point in time he was pac-man pacquiao where he had his own late logo and everything like that was very rare for a boxer to have a nike shoe signature nike shoe at that and he really did what he had to do in that frame of mind so shout out to that what you also got to remember is these companies spend millions and millions of dollars in order to drive the market. It makes sense because you see them in different lights. You know, a brand owner 
who's like a so let's let's take the nineties back in the day. Nobody was really from our culture big on Tommy Hilfiger and you know Ralph Lauren until we brought it to the forefront and they kind of benefited because I wouldn't say they they pretty much designed for us but we wore it away that you know we made them hot in the streets and people from our culture were really spending the money and marketing dollars to these brands that didn't really project us as somebody they were really targeting so it was just added dollars and added revenue that we brought into their you know business model but then it continues today where you see uh pharrell williams and you know uh Tyler the Creator brought in by Louis Vuitton and ASAP Rocky and Rihanna and Puma. It's 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 gonna continue, but we just gotta know that, you know, the more that we do and the more we become visible, the more money and the more dollars and marketing dollars that go behind us because our numbers are there. So whether you're a basketball star, a rapper, an actor. Whatever lane you want to project yourself in, the numbers matter, and then the sponsorships will come along, man. We got a special guest this week, and he's going to help break that down, man. We'll be right back. The JBT Network is coming together for a boxing talk, and I can't wait to invite you to join us. The boxing talk will be a fantastic opportunity for us to discuss the latest news, trends, and strategies in the boxing industry. We'll be hearing from some of the most talented and influential people in the sport, including trainers, coaches, and athletes themselves. But that's not all. The JBT Network has an amazing lineup of shows to keep your entertainment throughout the out the day starting 8 a.m. with Hardcore Boxing hosted by Jay Hardcore, then Cast Sports takes over at 2 p.m. to break down the history of boxing, at 4 p.m. the voice of the street takes over with Just Do Boxing. The day continues when Hardcore Boxing returns at 8 p.m., and then the night is closed out at 9 p.m. with the Rise podcast The Insiders from the Upton, which is the home gym of Tank Davis. The JBT Network also is the host to Let's Talk Fashion hosted by Remo where he discussed the culture of fashion, sports, and entertainment every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your favorite show. Also try to share it with a friend. What's going on? It's your boy Remo, a.k.a. Mr. Rich Threads. I told you I got a special guest in the building, man. My youngin. Danny Boy, what's up, man? My God, my God, my day one, big bro, what's poppin'? Ain't shit, man. Fuck you been up to, man? Been a while. Another day, another dollar, you know, trying to be like you, big bro. You already know. Ah, uh, yo, just give him a quick introduction, man. Let him know about you. I'm Danny Boy, <sighs> Brooklyn, New York, Brownsville, to be specific. You feel me? Artist, entrepreneur. Philanthropist, whatever you want to call it, I just do it all, man. Top to bottom, from the ground up, brick by brick. You already know. That's just what we pushing, man. You already know. All right, all right. Well, we got a we got a, a connection that go back for years now, man. You want to yeah. give them, you want to give him the insight, or you want me to put him in, man? I say I, I tell him from my, from the young boy perspective. So. Me and, me and my big bro, Remo, probably go back. How long has it been now? Since I was, like, high school. So that had to be 10 years ago, probably even when I was in middle high school. So that had to be, what, like, old 2010, 2011, probably even before that. So, yeah, yeah, I was just a young boy, young artist, putting out music on the internet and shit and just doing my thing. And then my big bro tapped in. He from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. He just seen something in me and then took mm -hmm. me under the wing. From there, he had me everywhere, radio shows, photo shoots, fashion shows, just put me in the mix and really schooling me to the game. Didn't even realize the whole time I was really just watching every move that he was making with the brand and really just took all of that game and then put it into my own shit for the merch side and the lifestyle brand that I built. And so it's really just come full circle just to see my big bro, like, you feel me, going from day one to where he at now as an OG and then him seeing me go from young boy to a grown man there at his age where he was at when he met me. So it's really like a full circle moment. And to see him doing this now, talking fashion and really schooling y'all niggas on this fly shit. And you feel me? It's just a full them. circle moment. It's a full Talk circle moment. Talk to them. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. nah, there's much, much needed. If you're going to get the opinion from anywhere, this is the guy to get it from. So I'm definitely glad he on deck with it now. That you feel me? Really put y'all niggas on, really tell y'all what's what and what's not. Yes, sir. You know what's crazy, though? Like, niggas brought you to me. I'm like, 
who this Chris Brown little nigga, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? I like yo, they, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know the breezy shit. So. That's a fact. But all of, like all of the aura that you grew into is like it's dope to see. Cause when we first brought you around, you was all shy. You was just smiling. We had you with the shorties. You was just like, yeah, like, yeah. I was just a young boy. But you know, you you allowed me to, to to put you into my vision and like really like you know cemented what we was doing. Cause you was probably one of the first dudes that uh, I try to display my clothes and that had good feet. Right. And you know when it comes to modeling, models have terrible feet. Like, right, you can't use them for nothing like, at all. So right, it's, right, right. It's it's just it's just a hard sell because them dudes are just or the females they just they can't really fulfill the whole vision from top to bottom. Like you know what I'm saying? So they they you feel me? If you're a traditional model, it's like you ain't really grow up in our type of culture and our type of streets putting on what we put on and kind of even lead to what your vision is. You got to come from a certain out. So it just made sense, like, all right, boom, I'm going to tap into the model shit. He get me into this type of shit, because that ain't what I really normally do. But yeah. then we got on flavor to it, and then it was a perfect combo. Ten plus years we've been rocking. Absolutely. Well, let's stay right there, though. Mm -hmm. Being that you had the aura from me, young boy, you came to us when you was damn near in high school, about to get out of high school. Type shit. What? What 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 brought that up? Like like what made you? What, what was your your fashionable moment that said, "All right, you know what? I'm into this type of shit." From a young boy, from a young person's perspective, I have to give it up to OG, my pops. Like my pops are flawed nigga, my uncles flawed niggas, all on that sort of thing. They like real OG, low life type niggas back from that era, and then they transition with like Pharrell into the babe, into all of the streetwear brands that really we really grew up on, like the Stussy and all of them type of niggas. And they just set the tone, like, all right, boom, from young, you already know this is that, and then this is that. You could dress like, you feel me, everybody, the trendy shit that's going to be in the stores, that's going to be on the shelves, or you could really tap into this flaw shit. Like, it's a whole different wave overseas. It's a whole different lane in these different states. You know? Look so at this like, nigga talking overseas and shit. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, just the streetwear, from a streetwear perspective, not even from a designer perspective, because, like, yeah. most niggas think that all the flaw shit is just, you know, on the racks and the designers and all that, but it's really, like, a niche type of thing where, like, you feel me, mainly, like, Japan type shit. That's where my, my main influences come from, like, Nigo, Pharrell, and all of them. They streetwear scene is just bananas. Like, you'll go over there, they don't even care, like, if it's the top brand or if it's, like, a brand new brand. As long as the quality did, the mission statement did, yep. and it, it lay right, then they gonna install it. So that's really where it comes from, just having that foundation of, like, having your individual style when you push it on, and then just making sure you're comfortable in whatever you wear. Making you making me proud, man. Talking that nah, shit. I got it. I got it from the OG, man. I got it from the OG. You making me proud right here, man. But listen, when when it comes to like some of the influences, being that you know you did music, you was a, you were influencer to you know a community, and you know kids follow behind what you're doing, and you've been around. So like, right. what's, what's some of the influences? Not only just in you know just in the hip hop culture, fashion itself, sports, like whatever, whatever. What what drew you to say like you know what I mean? I want some of what's going on here because i seen this right i feel like it was like the whole culture period like all of the like i feel like if you black like we black so it's like we all got a common denominator at the end of the day and yeah. then everybody put their individual background their individual style to it and then when you throw money in the mix when you get a little bread you know you're gonna splurge you know you're good to really be who you are so it's like people like hove of course he wasn't really a big fashion nista type nigga, but he, if you go back to like 03, he went chrome horse in 03. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, you got the- Settle shit, settle shit. Like stack bundles, like niggas didn't even know stack was wearing the nudies back in the day. Remember, I think you put me onto that back in the day. Whoa, like, you know, yeah. I can nudie since like, you feel me, 06 type shit and then you feel me, that whole wave came. So it's just like niggas that really just get out here and they really got an individual sense of style. So like Pharrell, Virgil. You got Nego, you got Taz Arnold, you got, you feel me, a bunch of different influential niggas, like Pusha T, Clips, the way that they was putting the streetwear on, Joel's and all them niggas, like it's a whole real little mixture of everybody, and then now that we got the access to all of this shit, like before you had to really know somebody, know somebody, had to be connected to get certain brands, yeah. now, like, you feel me, now that we got our names up, and we got the bread, and we got, you know, we able to move around and do a little bit of this and that, we able to really tap into what we really want. So it's not like, all right, I just gotta get what's around or what's available. I can really curate 
what I'm be styling and profiling. And that's just where I got it from. Like for all and all them niggas, really, like Kanye, all them niggas, like the real top of the lawn niggas. You know what? I don't think you need me here, man. You, you want to run the show? You you can go ahead. You sound you sound more you sound like me out here, man. But I told you I got it from the old G. You, you gotta definitely take up. over the show, man. I might need a co-host soon, bro. I might have to come in, pop in every once in a while, and just do a little spot. You showing out right now, man. So so what I did notice, like when you did come around from an early early age, right? I would say right. you was wearing shit that like we used to call grills back then. The sixes was always your thing. I I, I noticed, and, and, and a good pair of threes. So it, is it safe to say, like from an early age, you became a sneakerhead, or you just like sneakers? That was that I say Jordans mainly. Like I started off just like everybody else in the hood. We always started off with ups and Jordans. That was my main thing with my pops, and then they sprinkle in the babes and little other little brands. Mm -hmm. But mainly, like you, we, you know, I was born in Chicago, so. I was born in an era where Mike was dominating and the Bulls was the hot shit. So Jordan everything from a baby, just straight Jordans. And then, you know, from there, you discover Flight Club and then you discover all of the collabs and all the special projects that they do. And then you shout out to Reggie for running. Mm -hmm. And you from all my peoples over there at the brand. So it's like they just embody what I embody in my life. So it's like I draw to that brand more than anything. And then when you come to like the six, it's like, you feel me? That's the first tip. It's just, it means something to me more than just the sneaker itself. It's just like mm -hmm. what's behind the sneaker, the, the moment behind it, the cultural impact behind it. And then, like you said, when you get down to them OGs, it's mainly the OGs first. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to go for the OGs first. And then with like the special collabs, like you said, with like the grills and shit, like different shit that sought after, like highly coveted. Yeah. I'll be searching for them. And then, you know, it's like the collector type thing. Like, it's more than just getting aware of it. It's just the fact that you got it. Like, you feel me? I went and I got that shit. Like, it's like a treasure hunt almost when you get some of them shits. And from young, like you said, from a young boy, that's been me. So I'm always going to keep a lot of crispy pair of J's. Always. So it's safe to say uh, no mids? No Jordan 1 mids? No. Nah, no mids. No mids. Nah, nah. I can't no. do no mids. All right, my bad. I apologize. I should know the answer to that one, right? <laughs> I'm too tall to do the meds. I look doofy with the meds on. <laughs> the socks, the sock combination, the calf to knee ratio. Don't yeah, play. nah, you can't really get the meds off. Like even with the jeans, it's gonna look too low. Or with yeah, the shorts, it's gonna yeah, look too high. It's just nah, you can't get it off. That's just musty. That's just musty energy right there. I mean, shout out to the brand though. It's, a, it's definitely a crowd for meds. It's just not me. Nah. I I guess <laughs> Bushwick, <laughs> Bushwick or something. Whatever though. Yeah, so it, somebody out there, they they moving. Listen. The men is moving. So somebody buying them shit. Listen, no disrespect to them though. It is what it is. But um being that you was an artist or you are an artist, you're an influencer, all of that, like how how important is it to the brand of, of being an artist that fashion? Like what is like how important is fashion to an artist? I say go hand in hand because, like, you feel me? Before they hear you, they're going to see you. So mm -hmm. I feel like what you put on is definitely a big statement. How you rock it is definitely a big statement. When you rock it is definitely a big statement because you could just have to fly your shit on, but niggas will know that you knew money. Like, you knew to this because you just got the fly your shit on, the latest shit on, versus you really curating, like I said, your style. Like, it's a difference between somebody who get bread and then they tailor their taste because now that they can afford them pieces that they wanted always, like mm -hmm. them bar car pieces, mm -hmm. and then it's a difference between somebody who got a stylist. You could tell that they got a stylist because they don't even really look comfortable in what they wearing. They don't look like, you feel me, they'll put this on on a regular day. So that'd I be the main they did it themselves, same shit, right? Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. I just look, it look forced. You feel me? When you when you got the, you know, shout out to the stylists because some people can't dress. You feel me? So some people need that. But then if you know how to dress, I feel like you know you could put it together for sure. So you so you saying you know how to dress? You don't need a stylist. That's what you're saying. I say I, I need a stylist for certain aspects. Like it's the different type of atmospheres, the different type of events that you step into that you might not have to that event. You feel me? And then the stylists come in and get you right, but you gotta have an input too. You can't just be a mannequin. It's crazy as you should be you used to be backstage with us just stomping around and we just 
Yeah. We doing a little bit of everything, man. man. We was in the mix for sure, soaking up all the game. Like I said, man, so many niggas through y'all just moving and shaking around, being the youngest nigga in the room, just listening. That's all I was doing the whole time, was just soaking it up, listening. I get my time to Sean here and there, do my little thing, but for the most part, just soaking it all up. Mm, I like to hear that, man. You ain't never fall off. Because I hate to see niggas that I have around me, they didn't fell off. I'm like, oh. Mm, yeah, yeah, nah, that was my main thing. I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't, you know, after all the shit we done did, after yeah, all Yeah, I put you, I put you in place, man, and like, look at this, how you, like, even if you ain't doing the same things in life in general. Right. You fall off and you just embarrassing me, like, damn, I can't even Yeah, it just look bad. Yeah, like, are you, you were standing next to this dude. Bad man. luck. Bad energy, bad energy yeah. in itself, oh, bad, man. Bad Yo, what do you think about the start, the, the current state of like fashion or hip hop in itself, like the, the culture in itself? How do you feel about the current stage of it? Man, over the last few weeks, I ain't going front. I've really been just taking a little overall look at it with the fashion game. Yeah. I feel like fashion. It's like, it's definitely, I want to say it's in the middle right now because I definitely like that they included more people. Like, they let more people get in the door and come in the buildings as far as, like, rap artists specifically. Like, letting rappers like Future, you know what I'm saying, doing his little collab. You got Tyler doing the Louis thing. You feel me? I feel like that's a big part of, like, Pharrell getting that job as a creative director. Yeah. So, like, get one musician in there that's got like a music background mixed with the fashion background and just kick the door down so now you got travis scott doing his thing with dior you got a bunch of different fashion houses that's collaborating with the people that really make they you know they should famous at the end of the day because it's not really hot until oh uh, hold, hold on hold on hold on low-key travis is not a good dresser it's a it's a you feel me i can't say not a good dresser no right I think I think his style and his the way he is was curated. I don't think like like if he didn't have bread, he wouldn't look like that, or he wouldn't his his aura wouldn't be that. I say this. I say Travis style because I fuck with Travis style personally because uh-huh. it fit him. You feel me? I feel like he don't go out of the norm. Like he he rocked the, the red the red sneakers for sure. He gonna rock some red sneakers for sure. No, I'm not talking not the footwear. I mean, as far as like what he wear on the on the body on the body, like the clothes type shit. Yeah, they got, yeah. They got, they, you know they got that's the little you know that crowd over there that that do they they little thing. He throw some pieces on every once in a while. You'll see him with like some shit like oh shit he pulled that out. But for the most part, they got they little wave that they do and they think like you know the baggy and all of that type shit. That's they way. I think I, I I look at him as uh almost like a like the little cousin of ASAP. Like you know what I'm saying? I think ASAP jumps out the window and does a lot of shit first and makes it safe for niggas. Sometimes it be a little over the top. Yeah. But it's like, all right, this nigga did it. Like we could try shit now. You know? Yeah. Nah. You know that's they always been on that way though. They they came out. Excuse me. Even when they dropped. With the Raph and all of that that they had on, like we knew about it, but you wasn't seeing niggas pulling out the Rick Owens, like mm-hmm. with the crazy Rick Owens clothes, like the clothes, the bat, you know, the tank tops and the pants. Yeah, yeah. it's a little, it's a, it's a over, it's an influx of Rick going around right now. Yeah, nah, you know, Rick is it right now, but back in those days when they yeah, was yeah. there to us, it was like we knew who Rick Owens was, but we wasn't going to buy that shit like that. It wasn't because it was a little freaky. You feel what I'm saying? It was just kind of out of the norm. Facts. I think I think at that point in time we had just got up on like Jeremy Scott. Yeah, and Jeremy Scott was in. Yeah, now that's when they was rocking the when he was going hard with the, the Adidas. wings with the Adidas wing joints. So like, I think I think that era kind of like started pushing into like fashion houses changing the the look of uh you know clothing aesthetic. Facts. It definitely went a little. We we started really experiment more i say around that era niggas really broke out of that like before we was like straight street weird that was as far as it would go you would probably throw on a little foreign little jacket or a polo or a shirt but you mm-hmm. wasn't really getting too crazy with the ready to wear shit i feel like now people really taking shit off the runway and they'll wear that shit to like the club type shit and you'll see that like oh okay you wasn't really seeing that before like that so i feel like niggas is more like confident and wearing like runway clothes I was uh-huh. talking- one thing i would say though I don't care how far I get and how fly I get. I ain't doing the dresses, dog. Yeah, yeah, nah. It's just you know, shout out to the niggas that do it. That's just not for me specifically. Yeah, I, I, I can't see. I can't like I couldn't fathom getting in it and just when I go pee, 
how this work? Like, <laughs> yeah, as far as I go, like I thought about like back in the days, Como they had a little uh, a kilt, like a kilt when niggas was doing the kilts and shit. Remember, I think I told you I was gonna get a kilt before, and you was like, "Nah, I don't do it." Don't yeah, do it. don't. Do it. <laughs> see, see, all right, see, uh, uh, the kilt joint could be looked at as a kilt if you just took the same pl- uh, plaid uh, flannel or something and, and then tied it on the waist with a pair of denims. It get the same right. aesthetic, but it's not. A skirt, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's not the it's not the pantsless your day. There you go. I mean, yeah. it's basically I play. See me, I play in I play in the water. You know what I mean? I play in between because I'm about to. Right. I'm about to be forty, dog. Believe it or not. Right. But you know, see, I still I got vulture merchant. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, you still you know then you come from that elk, so you gonna always keep it flavorful. You just yeah, not right. gonna do too much. I ain't gonna drag it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Too much. You ain't gotta do too much to try to still fit in with the young niggas. You could fit in as an OG. You don't want to look crazy though. Facts. Let's say, let's say, uh, a brand or you know what I mean, a, a sponsor had to come. Like yo, Danny, I want to su- su- uh, support you. Right. I move forward, with you eat, whether it be a collab or you be our spokesperson, lifetime guarantee type joint. What brand right. would that be? Nike. Mm. Okay. Tell Out me. That- that's the that's the foundation right there. You feel me? I don't know. I might uh, flip the camera and show y'all, but like I, I did the uptown. I did you know Nike is the foundation. That's like not even just with sneakers, just with the whole brand identity, just how they built it up from the mud. Same thing, same you know um, embodying what I stand for. To just do it, the marketing campaigns, how they you know stay consistent throughout the different eras how they reinvent different things, everybody associated with Nike already, like mm-hmm. just the whole, just encompassed in the one. If it was any brand that I'd say I'd lock in with for life, it gotta be the check. Okay, you know what? I always said Nike, they have a lot of potential. Right. But I feel as though they, uh, like, they allow the calendar to get opened up by everybody, you know? Even even the way they allow uh, Drake to play a little bit with the Nocta, with the big check on the back or whatever, it's <laughs> means to play with it. But I just think that you got to be of a certain elk for them to be like, you know what? We're going to give you the runway to do whatever you want. Oh, the, yeah. The material no, and technology is endless over there. You feel me? Right, 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 right. And they did. They just did a little, a little Paris um, kind of fashion week drop where they just showed some of that, what you're talking about, like just some of the out-of-the-box ideas, what they could really do if they wanted yeah. to. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I say that one person that I think that is really breaking through and really like opening up that gate that we're talking about right now is like Cactus. Because if you look yeah. at all niggas that you know they she putting out and all of that like even the merch it is mm-hmm. nike on it but you like oh nah this is like never seen before like how are they letting them get away with this yeah. like even put crystals went the crazy dog. with the uh with the fleet with the fleet tools yeah like like oh, that's neat. Like, I don't know. crazy with those like even just the the uptowns putting the little supreme uh the uptempo form oh, yeah, on, the yeah, up- yeah, yeah. on the side yeah the free- with the uptowns like that is crazy. Like even with like niggas like Yachty, like they let him come in there and do his little project in there. They even fucking with the streamers and people like that. Now just I th- I feel like now going into this next little wave after the pandemic. Now that they reevaluated what the culture really means, like how much we really you know move the needle. Yeah, I think they more and more people in the door. They letting younger people in the door. That's really coming in with fresh new ideas, and I think it's really going to go to the next level, especially. When I get in the building. So, you know, that's coming soon. Ah, I need a box or two. You feel me? Mm-hmm. What I would say, though, I think I think Nike more so is getting pressure from these other brands where they implementing a lot more of the uh, street wear into it. Like, yeah. Adidas got the big pants that they make yeah. in terms of, like skirts or whatever the case like that for females. And you see in uh, New Balance, they just, they came out of nowhere, speeding ahead. Yeah. Like, they've been yeah. around, but it's like, it's a different aesthetic with the same premise of like athleisure, you, if you would say. Right, that. they taking it to another level. Shout out to Teddy and them. I think that's just, you feel me? Like they got different energy in the building. Like shout out to my boy Jordan that work over there. They just got different energy in the building. It's like, you feel me? You got different 
younger people. You got, you know, Teddy over there. You bringing in people collaborating, like, you know, Salehi. Then you got um, Joe Fresh Goods. You got a bunch of different people that they let and just come in the building. And then, you know, if you come in the building, they ain't just going to let you do one thing and then leave the building. They're going to take something from whatever you, you know, do with them. And then they implement that solely but surely somehow, some way into the brand. So New Balance, the perfect example of like a legacy brand, letting new energy in and then just taking it to a whole nother level. Because I got two pair, Neil. That's crazy. I got, yeah, I don't even got room for shit no more, bro. Look yeah, nah, it's getting crazy in that closet. I ain't going front. I never had no New Balance. I went and got two pair of the 19, uh, 19, no, the 2002 odds. I went and got two pairs. I got a pair of those. I got 10, 10 to 1060s. I got wifey 1060s. Like, we went crazy. But, yeah, you know it's lit when people start knowing the numbers of the sneakers because how many people can name New Balance sneakers like that? That's a fact. That's a fact. Yo, before we even get out of here, give niggas an update, man. What's up? What's, what what projects you got going on? Talk we to build, me. building it. We building it. You already know brick by brick. We getting ready for the worldwide launch. The website coming. You know, we just getting ready to really push that. I got a campaign that's going to drop real, real soon, surrounding the whole brand, surrounding the music and everything, all encompassed into one. The main goal is the vertical integration. So right now, we're just trying to get everything in-house, everything just ready in one building so we can kick out music, fashion, any other products that we pushing out all under, you know, one umbrella, all in one central location. So that's the main thing, just establishing a business. On the music side of things, you already know Meech and T out right now. We about to drop that video. Got a couple other visuals that's going to be coming because that's, you know, the most important thing, showing face. You know, where we from, we be trying to, you know, be on the low, low, but we got to show stand, face. got to stand out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, we got to we gotta show face. So that's the next thing coming out saw more, just really shaking hands, kissing babies and all that. Just putting more energy out into the streets. Just, you know, more real nigga shit out into the streets. I'm going to be home soon. Got to come tap in with Big Bro. You already know. We gonna come check him, yeah. I need that great varsity too. I was gonna tap in with you. I need that great one. I got the blue one. I need the gray one. All right, bet, bet, bet. Um, where they can find you at, man? Man, yes, I'm Dano. Y e s r m d a n o on everything: Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Danny Boy, rap name Danny Boy. You already know, man. We put it in stone. So tap in with me, lock in with me. We gonna be where you at soon. Brick by brick from the ground up. You already know. I appreciate you too, big bro, for tapping in with me, having me on this shit. I love it. Yo, could I could I put you on the spot? What's up? You got a quick eight for me? I ain't got no balls right now. Nah. But I, I have something for you when I see you, for sure. All right, all right. I put I put it's that real, I, I, It's a real sneaky guy right here. He I almost I almost got you. Yo, I appreciate you tapping in, man. You know how it go with us, man. Man, we Miss locked in. Man, Whenever you in the town, we make it happen, man. Oh, yeah, no, nah, forever. You already know, man. Shout out to the family, too. This my real big bro. So we going to be in here fashion, talking it up. Y'all tap in. You already. Stay fly. Stay fit. Stay rich. You heard? Yo, definitely shout out to our guest, Danny Boy, for pulling up, man. Man, I love that kid, man. Great energy, man. But let's not hold up the show anymore. We know it's your favorite part of the show. It's Fashion and Clashing, where we go through a, a couple looks and, you know, scrum us through the internet, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, whatever it might be. People are starting to send me looks. If you want to send me some looks and that you think is, is viable for me to, uh, you know, review on every week's show, Make sure you hit me up, rich underscore threads. Or comment down low below, send me the link or tag me or something. And we make it happen. Well, with that being said, you know how the show go. It's either fashion, loving the outfit, you feeling everything that's going on there, or it's clashing. You're not really feeling it, it's looking dirt. You don't know what's going on in the outfit. Get it the fuck out of here. So, let's get into the first look, man. Let's check this one out and see what we got. I'm doing a clothing haul because I went shopping. So here's stuff that I got. I bought everything that you're seeing, so no plug for everybody. You don't get a plug and you don't get a plug. First off, these shoes from Melita Baumeister. Marnie. 
And also I bought this hat, but I forget the name of the brand. I bought this from Bape. It's really cool. Um, it's like knit. On the water swap! Stop! This is from Issey on G. Yeah. Star of the show. There's a lot more, but I don't really feel like trying it on because I have somewhere to go, but yay! Alright, I know she a visit to the city, you know, she's a beautiful, you know, tennis star, up and coming, but none of that shit was New York. I don't know where you got all of that stuff from, and wherever you got it from, you should take it back. It's clashing, sorry, I ain't really feeling it, but no. Not interested. Now, let's jump into this look right here, man. Where, you know, I always say fashion doesn't come with borders and size doesn't come with swag. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hey, it's been a little minute since I hit y'all across y'all head with a voiceover. Had some errands to do today, so we're going with a little calm fit. Hey, springtime is here, and these track pants by Engineered by Dre are my go-to. Now, if you've been watching my vlogs, you know I've been heavy on Goodfellow lately. Hey, I thought green was my color for the spring, but orange is looking good on your boy lately. Now, I've been trying to find every reason to pull out these Asics, but to be honest, I don't really think it went with this fit, man. Hey, now, I prayed for rain, and it came today. Lord knows I've been trying to find every reason to wear this orange rain coat. I got in our last haul. Midway through the video, I wasn't really rocking with the orange shirt, so we just gonna go tank top. But brother, mama, there go that man again. Hey man, making the fit look good is all in the pattern, so we gonna go with this corduroy hat. Now, I cut up an old shirt to make a scarf. I really didn't know how I wanted to wear it, because we can either do the shoulder thing, or we can throw it on the side and be, you know, be a little calm with it. Hey, that boy clean. We're gonna go with my daily Cubans and my Apple Watch. These Gucci shades are turning into my dailies, man. So we go Protect Mason or Spice Let's Ball. go with my signature Protect Mason. A little bit of Crust Blaster 3000. You think that I put that ish on? No. Either way you put it, man, it's a calm little spring get up for a Florida boy like myself. Hey, make sure y'all tap that like, tap that follow, and let's get it rocking. Now, he laid that shit together. I ain't gonna lie. It's fashion all the way around with that one. He went from the, the layers that he was wearing to the scents that he was wearing and hit the road. And he gave you a little insight of what he was buying, too, man. Fashion made affordable. I always loved that. So, it's definitely fashion in my book. Now, this one right here is a challenging look. You know, it's not for everybody, but, you know, fashion isn't for everybody. And sometimes other people could do a little bit more. Take a look and you see what I'm talking about. Now, interesting. Colorful, playful, tailored very nicely. Fashion in my book. I know it might the the you know the texture of the pants might be a tad bit of a stretch, but sometimes you need a little extra pop for the outfit. And I think the pants lay with the jacket was a really good touch. So I'm gonna go fashion again in that book. Now creativity comes with style and confidence. Rotate. Fit Check Friday, and I'm coming to you with a great fit to start off the month. So let's get right into it. All right, start on the body, on the body, on the body. You see the book bag on the trench, uh huh. That's that post archive faction trench, uh huh. It's almost spring, it's about to be go go gadget weather. Get your trenches out, uh huh. Nothing messing with this though. And then on the body, on the body, on the body. 
Uh huh. Let's get into it. This is that Fear God Athletics. Uh huh. One more time for the people. Fear God Athletics. Very rare. Sold out everywhere. Uh huh. Fear God Athletics hoodie. Very very dope. And then on the legs. On the legs. On the legs. That's right. We got the heavyweight fleece pants. And then on the toes. On the toes. On the toes. The very rare sold out one basketball sneaker. Fear God Athletics. Jerry Lorenzo, Adidas, they don't get no better. Quasi Kessie here, Fit Check Friday. Uh-huh, this is how I'm pulling up. It's sweatsuit weather, it's trench weather. Let's get it, baby. Yay! Well, uh, what can I say? Clashing. I'm sorry. I don't know if that was a jacket or he was ready to jump out of a plane. The whole fair god outfit looked big and I, the, it didn't, it didn't lay it right. So I definitely, I'm going to pass on that one. No, let's get to the next one. This right here, you would think is something that, you know, I'd be interested in, but I'm not really into the monogram looks of things. The LVs all over the place is not really my forte, so I'm going to go clashing. I understand why people would go clashing on this one because it's, I guess, the going thing, you know, denim on denim, but LV prints all over the place, not my thing, not my swag. So definitely clashing on that point. Now, we always like to say confidence and swagger doesn't have to come with a price point, but I'm just trying to figure out where everybody getting this goddamn money from. Rotate. Man, we got Prada boots. We got Prada hat. We got Prada bag. I don't know if they're giving out new stimulus checks. I don't got none, but this is definitely fashion in my book. It's playful. It's kind of simple, not too, not too over the top. It's not bad. It's not a, it's not a poor effort. And you know, I could appreciate it. Now, we say couples and going out, making each other look good. I love to see a nice black couple dress up and go out and hit the town. Check these two out. Now that right there, I'm going to go half and half. I'm going to go half fashion and half clashing because I, can, am I allowed to do that? Uh, I guess it's my show so I could do it as I please, right? But... I think that he did a better job than her with his outfit. Uh, outfit had a, a little too much layers and prints for it, or for my liking. So I'm going to go clashing on her fit. I'm definitely going to go fashion on his fit. The loafers kind of laid right. And, you know, I appreciated that outfit a thousand percent. But all in all, beautiful black couple. Why not? You know what? Give him fashion just for their skin. Now, we keep talking about pushing the limits and pushing the envelope when it comes to fashion and <sighs> check it out. All right, y'all, I'm about to go to this movie screening with my girl and I want y'all to get ready with me. Um, trying some things that could be seen as like risque. Let's do it. Like I know this man is not got on tights, but stick with me. For the bottom, I'm going with this CDG skirt. I believe it's either men's or unisex. It comes with like a jawstring inside. I feel like there's not enough cool clothes in like the dress area. It's crazy ass vintage Burberry button up. I get asked a lot if I'm ever gonna bring back this puffer tie. The short answer is yes. The long answer is I don't know when. Blazer that I literally 
grabbed out of a random thrift store last week. One of my biggest style inspos is Jeremy Scott. I love to feel like a little lighthearted, a little goofy in my outfits. So I finished the look off with my Balenciaga side bag, leg warmers, my Rick Owens dressed up for this occasion, but obviously that's a creative grungy, outside the box thinker type of guy. Always been inspired by like those 80s workout women with the tights on and the leg warmers. Let me know what you think about this fit, y'all. I'm out. I don't know what's wrong with this man. Let me, let's start off by saying this is clashing. I'm not into this look at all. I don't know where he was going with this and I don't think it's worth reviewing. So let's just jump into the next one. Rate your outfit from one through ten. I give myself a nine and a half. What you feel like you could have done better? Maybe it's a pair of sunglasses. Okay. With, With that hat? I mean, when okay. the hat comes off, the sunglasses gotta come out. Okay, okay. So prepare. You want to be prepared. Yeah. What's that? BB? That's a BB belt? No, this was actually sent to me from... Um, I don't know the name exactly, but they sent it to me. It's on some company of Instagram. Do you think everybody will agree with that rating? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you should ask the people. Me personally, that was like a six, so that's definitely a clash. And she had mad different prints on and the LV and the, the fake BB belt, Tim's. Uh, that's just a lot going on. And she had like two different lumberjack prints. And then the, 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 the furry hat. I don't know where that all connected with each other, but I guess, no. Nah, it's still clashing. Get out of here. Now, I want to take my time with this one right here because we're talking the former undisputed 135-pound champion, the current WBC 140-pound champion. We're talking Devin Haney. Check the looks. What's going on, Dev? Man, you always clean every time I see you. How you feeling, man? Sure. Thanks, right. man. Come on, man. Let them know what you got on today. Uh, all fear of God. Okay. Um, custom for me. Yes, sir. Uh, straight from Jerry, Jerry Lorenzo, fear of God. Head to toe. Yes, sir. What can we expect on Saturday, man? Fireworks. Two yes. So, Devin recently fought Ryan Garcia, which he ultimately lost the fight, the war, the battle in itself. But it wasn't. He came kind of mediocre this time around. And I'm going to go clashing because he came with the essentials fit. I didn't quite understand why. For some of the dope outfits that he's pulled together before, he, he went essentials from the dresser room. Forget the dresser room. He did the, uh, the pre-fight. He had on some fair guard essentials attire. Then he had some gloves. He said, bye, Jerry. Create a custom for him. He looked like a, a mix between the Matrix with Garth Vader. I didn't know what was going on. So that day alone, he got a clash. Fight day, he got a clash in. Because he went with the, just the general essentials look. It looked like he went to the local Jimmy Jazz and said, you know what? I'm going to box in that. I'm going to cut off the sleeves and I'm coming out like this. And then he put the, the, the moccasin knit joints on his feet. Created by the shoe surgeon. You got to get your money back for those. Because we didn't even know if it was ankle protection in there or nothing. So. Dev. Sorry. Hope you get better. But it's definitely clashing. And um. That's all I might have for you this week. Don't forget to rate. Comment. Like. Subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if you have any suggestions or anybody you want on the show. Tell them hit me up, man. Let's have a conversation over at Let's Talk Fashion, powered by the JBT. And on that note, I'm out of here. Peace.